Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, I don't know anyone who shares, truly shares the word of God and is not excited. I'm not saying one who reads from the Bible. I'm saying one who shares the word of God and is not excited. The word of God is sweet. Praise <laughs> God, it's sweet. So when I say I'm so excited, it's because I know the word of God is going to come. I know because he is with me always and he's with you also. He promised, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Release your faith in agreement with me right now. Say, Father, I demand for my daily bread. Hey, listen to me. School fees that you need to pay now is part of your daily bread. All the things you need for your car, for your work, for everything, your family is part of your daily bread. So you're going to receive it today. So Father, I receive my daily bread right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, praise God. And hey, I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube page. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. And then share this message. That's one way you partner with us. Share this message. Subscribe to our channel. And encourage others to subscribe also. God bless you. Praise God. Now then. We are talking about the revelation of eternal life. Everything I've been sharing with you is in that line. You see, let's look, 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 let's look at the scriptures. John chapter 17. I, I shared a great deal on this scripture last week. But I want us to go there again. Verse 3, John chapter 17 and verse 3. It says, and this, Jesus speaking here, and this is eternal life. What is eternal life? That they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Now, I told you something here, that when he said, and Jesus Christ, he's not saying, they will know you, God, then they will now know me, Jesus. No. What he's saying is, they will know you, God, through me. Now, what does it mean, true me? He's not like he wants to stand in the way of us knowing the Father. No. You see, he's saying, I'm the one that carries the true image and the true picture of the Father. So, to know Jesus is to know the Father. If you search the knowledge of the Father apart from Jesus, you will really know him. You will know something about him but you will not receive eternal life. Because the knowledge that the Son brings is the knowledge that impacts eternal life into us. So as we behold in that knowledge, something is happening in us. This is what only the Son does. No angel can teach you accurately about God, even though they know things about God. But no angel can give you eternal life. You see, I'll tell you some things about angels. Angels make mistakes. Oh yes, they do make mistakes. So they are not always 100% accurate. Now, there are different kinds of angels. There are angels who come from the throne of God. See that? Now they come from the throne of God, they come, they give you a message, and then they go back. You read that in, 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 the, in the book of Daniel, and then you read that in, in the book of Luke. You remember Zachariah? When Gabriel told him, look, you're going to have a sight. Say, how can this be? And Zachariah said, look, I stand in the presence of God. And I'm telling you what, I, I, I was sent here to give you this kind of information. You're asking me how. Are you okay? In fact, you're going to be dumb. <laughs> it's going like, we don't have time for wasting. We don't have. You're not going to use your mouth to speak because this one I can just imagine Gabriel looking at. Now, now, truth be told, if you read that scripture properly, you will have this understanding that Isaiah 
Oh, mm -hmm. sorry, Zachariah have been praying for a child. Zachariah have been praying for a child. But guess what? He was praying in unbelief. So imagine, you know, imagine I'm praying and say, Lord, I need that. Maybe finances, for example, or maybe you want to buy a property and say, Lord, I really need this property. <laughs> Lord, just give us the money so that we'll get this property. And suddenly an angel appears to you and says, your prayer has been answered. You are going to get that property. And I'm like, how? How? No business. My business has not been working. Uh, nobody, has, everything is just bad. How? He is looking at you and saying, I don't understand. Because <laughs> you know, cause the angel wasn't there listening to your prayer. You know, you know what I'm saying? The angel was just doing his job in the presence of God and said, hey, come. Go tell this man on earth that his prayer has been answered. So the angel comes with this excitement and said, Amen, this guy must have been touching the heart of God. Wow, for God to send me that his prayer is answered. And then God shows up and says, your prayer has been answered. God said, you will get this thing. They're like, well, how am I going to get it? Like, I'm buying the wrong address. How many, wait, <laughs> you want to cross check. That's what happened in Zachariah's case. So the angel thought of me, like, look, I've seen men destroy their destiny. I've seen men destroy prophecy with their mouths. This one, lie, lie. He said, because he came with a double message. And there was, and it was important that these two events would take place six months apart. You see that now? So John the Baptist was to be born six months before Jesus is to be born. So as I live here, I'm going to marry. So if you tamper with this miracle, something is going to happen to the ministry of Jesus. So Angel Gabriel said, you know what? You are going to be dumb because the way we destroy things is with our mouths. So the angel said, you're going to be dumb. Not saying a word until this thing comes to pass. And that's exactly what happened. <laughs> Because you find the same angel goes to Mary and she asks the same question. How can these things be seen that I don't know a man? Now, Mary has not been praying for a child. She hadn't reached that stage yet to be praying for. She wasn't married yet. She was just betrothed. So she knew this is the man she's going to end up marrying in her life. And then now, they're coming to tell her that she will have a, a child. Praise God. So, now then, Jesus was talking to us and he says, to have eternal life is to know the Father through him, through his light. And I told you something last week, Friday, I guess, I think it was on Friday, I told you this. I said, hey, how do you get to know the Father through Jesus? There are many things you will be experiencing in life. You see, as you walk with Jesus, remember what I said about giving your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, giving him your mind. Now, when you have done that, now what I'm about to share with you is not something generality of people, even Christians will experience. I want you to listen and listen hard. You see, Jesus actually said this. He made this statement. He said, because iniquity or lawlessness will increase, the love of many will wax cold. I'll come to that. Just keep that in your mind, even what I'm saying to you now. So when you have given your heart to the Lord Jesus, I said, that is deliberate. You don't pride, I'm a Christian. Eh, God loves me. Anything I want to do, I do. God still loves me. You've not given your heart to Jesus Christ. You haven't. Hey, but I speak in the, ah, yes, you have the Holy Spirit inside you, no doubt. You are saved. I'm not saying you're not saved. You are saved. But you haven't given him your heart. So what does that imply? It simply implies that you will not be a partaker of his kingdom. You see, you know, I want you to listen. 
The moment the Holy Spirit was given to you, it was given to you for one purpose. To guide you in the path of life. And when he, as he's guiding you in the path of life, you ought to follow. If you don't follow, you will not walk the path of life. And if you don't walk the path of life, you are not going to receive that thing that we call eternal salvation. A lot of people mistake this thing and think the more oh, Lord Jesus coming to us, then He gives you, oh, that salvation is eternal. Nothing can ever happen to it. Don't let any man deceive you. And he say, oh, once saved, always saved. I have no problem with that. The problem I have is, are you saved? When did you get saved? You see that now? So Jesus begins to guide you through the Holy Spirit. And as he's guiding you, what's happening? Jesus said, there is the narrow way. He says, walk in that narrow way. And he says, only few will find it. Only few will find that narrow way. How do you find that narrow way? You don't stumble into it. The Holy Spirit guides you. Now, here's the point. As he's guiding you, certain things are being shared of your life. As he's guiding you, certain things are being shared of your life. And you keep going and going and then, then, then you begin to understand a whole lot of things from him. Now, I, I'll give you an example. My faith brought up, or the way I was brought up in, in the faith, my early days of working with faith, I was brought up um, to, to understand and receive the essence of faith in our lives as people. So now, so I, I, that early stage, I, you will hear or we understood that, I'm giving an example now. We understood that using things like the anointing oil, you know how people use the anointing, and people even abuse uh, the usage of anointing oil. So we were like, it's not necessary. See, because we felt, look, we have something better than the anointing oil. Okay, so you would never find me buy anointing oil for what? See, now, but you see, I was walking with the Lord Jesus. Okay, I was trusting him, let him guide me, let him lead me. So, the Lord now led me to the what I call my spiritual father today, Apostle Emmanuel Nuhukuri. So the Lord led me, not just to him, the Lord led me to walk with him. So I became his personal assistant. And I wanted to follow this story. And it, I didn't go to him to say, sir, please, I want you to be my spiritual father. I want you to be my... Now, the Lord actually, one day I'll tell you the story, the step-by-step -step story of how the Lord did everything to have not 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 on today's broadcast now listen so i i began to work with him as his personal assistant now he's a prophet he he works his major in ministries is dealing with the prophetic and in dealing with the prophetic he deals with uh, most times he deals with elements now if you understand that good for you <laughs> it's good not, I don't have the time right now to explain that to you. So, it now means that he was always using, like, the anointing oil. I was his personal assistant. So, you know what that meant? That meant I have to be the one carrying the anointing oil. <laughs> See? Now, okay, the Lord was leading me to him. The Lord didn't tell me this part. So, I found myself in this situation where I have to be carried. So, the first thought was like, hmm. Maybe God wants me to um, share with him that this anointing oil thing is, is not, is not, you understand? But of course, the Bible says, study to be quiet. I knew I was in the will of God. I knew God led me here. Now I'm carrying this anointing oil that I seem not to believe in. You get what I'm saying? So, ah, then it became a burden in my heart. So I began to pray about it. I said, Lord, what do I do with this situation? 
Now, not because I felt the anointing oil was a sin. I just felt, I mean, it's too much burden. I mean, so I began to pray a lot. And guess what? Then the Lord began to speak to me about the anointing oil. Now, I went with the Lord with this mentality. Lord, we fast this level now. I mean, how do I, how do I handle this situation with this man? You know, how, how do I handle it? And then the Lord began to teach me about the anointing oil. And then the Lord began to teach me the significance in the work of the ministry. I said, whoa, wow, I didn't know this part. I didn't know this part. Wow, okay. This is important too. Yeah, okay, praise <laughs> God. Now what happened there? You see, how did I come to understand? Now, I can do a teaching on that later. How did I come to understand the place of things like the anointing oil? Now, that's related to several other things. Sometimes when you see people who walk in the prophetic, you see them do certain things, you know. You, you see them, in, you know what I'm talking about. Now, not everything they do is right, of course. You know, some go the extreme, some abuse. But I'm talking about genuine prophets of God and symbols and things like that so i learned something and that helped broaden my mind about a lot of things concerning our faith concerning the old testament but when you hear me tell you something like there is no difference between the old and the new testament it's very deep that statement is very deep now in your shallowness you want to come and say jesus see i know all those things but when I tell you that it's from a place of deep reflection and knowledge of who the Father is. And I have come to know the Father. See, I have known him from the Old Testament. I have known him from the New Testament. And I see one Father. One Father. He never changed operation. That's another thing. Story is God. So now, the Lord Jesus brought me into the knowledge I didn't read it from a book. By experience. See, so I was walking with Jesus and I had this problem with the usage of anointing oil. And I went to him and said, Lord, I don't get this. And he opened my understanding to it. Then I saw the Father. Are you getting what I'm saying? I saw the Father from it. Now, Jesus says, that is eternal life. Because you see, that knowledge is eternal. Like I said, it opened me up to a whole lot of things. So when you see people today arguing, you know, for example, when people say, uh, Titan is of the Old Testament. <laughs> you see, when, when, when you hear me use hard words on people like that, I don't abuse anybody. For example, you may have heard me say this before. Anyone who says you should not tithe, that person, no matter how good you think he is, is walking by the spirit of the Antichrist. Take this from me. If you don't understand it today, one day you will understand it. If you're a child of God, you will. Because you see, if you're walking by the Holy Spirit, I don't have a problem with you. I smile. Go on. Is the Holy Spirit you're walking with? Just keep walking with Him. He will teach you one day. Forget what every preacher is telling you. One day, He will teach you. He has taught me. So, you grow in Him. You know, like, like I always tell I said, ask the preacher, this thing you are saying, is it from your studying or from the revelation of the Holy Spirit? If they say from the revelation, they will ask them how. Did the whole, how did the Holy Spirit visit you and tell you this? I bet you and I stand to be debated on this or to be corrected on this. No one will ever say the Holy Spirit told him that he should not tithe again. No one. I challenge everybody on earth for this. No one. Why? Because he has taught me about it and he cannot deny himself. He cannot teach me one thing. And I know when I said the Holy Spirit taught me, I can tell you how he taught me. 
And I know he cannot teach me something and teach another person completely opposite from what he taught me. You understand what I'm saying? And I didn't just go to him and say, teach me. No. Step by step, precept upon precept. So when I say I challenge everybody on earth, don't come and tell me the Bible said this, the Bible said this, but no, tell me the encounter you had with the Holy Spirit that he told you that this is wrong. And remember, Jesus handed us over to him. He didn't hand us over to the Bible. He handed us over to him. So bring forth your knowledge that is from the Lord Jesus Christ. And let us discuss. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, this was not how I planned. <laughs> so, 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 hear me. By Jesus, I came to understand some of those things. Now, what did that do to me? It gave me liberty. Remember what Jesus said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Because I'll tell you the truth, sometimes you know, I'm carrying that oil, and then we use it for ministration. And I just feel, I just feel, I know, you see, I know more than this thing. Now. So why am I, why am I here? Why am I doing this now? You see that I didn't know that I was becoming, the, the thing I thought I knew, the knowledge I knew, kept me in bondage. I didn't know that. Now, is it till today, not like you, you, you still not see me say, go and buy anointing oil, and then, but then there are specific things I do. I tell people, get a bottle of anointing oil, and I'm going to give you an instruction for it. See that now? So you, you never see me do it in mass, like everybody bring anointing oil for a meeting. Uh -uh, I will not do that. Because now I understand the knowledge, so I know the use of it, where to use it, and where it's not necessary to use it. But I'll talk to you about that some other day. Praise God, my time is up. Father, we give you praise. Let your knowledge fill our hearts and bring us understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen, step out today and have a wonderful day. God bless you. Bye.